Around the turn of the 20th century, William Bancroft, a wealthy philanthropist from Wilmington, saw how the city was spreading beyond its borders and formed a plan to protect as much of the surrounding countryside as he could for future generations. He wanted, in his own words, to gather up the rough land along the Brandywine Creek above Rockland and hold it for the future Wilmington, a Wilmington of hundreds of thousands of people. As he said, it has been a hobby or a concern with me for more than 26 years to endeavor to get parkland for the advantage of the people of Wilmington and its vicinity. Wanting his work to continue on after him, Bancroft formed Woodlawn, an incorporated entity charged in part with the task of protecting the lands he had secured. And for a while, the Woodlawn Trust seemed destined to fulfill Bancroft's vision. Over the last 60 years, however, Woodlawn has been slowly selling off William Bancroft's legacy to developers, slowly perverting his dream of a greenway flowing north out of Wilmington. Of the thousands of acres Woodlawn has acquired since its inception, only a few hundred remain. Their website claims that the new National Monument land, consisting of 1,100 acres, was a gift to the federal government when in fact the parcel was actually purchased by the Mount Cuba Conservation Trust for an undisclosed sum. In the 80 plus years of its existence, Woodlawn has given away precious little of its total land. Although it has been one of the largest developers in Newcastle County over the years, it is not possible to know exactly how much land they have plowed under. Roughly 770 acres are all that remain of its acquisitions. And rather than protect it, Woodlawn plans to carve up a large part of the Beaver Valley in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. 325 acres of historically, biologically, and recreationally significant land that was originally intended to be protected will now be destroyed by developers. In the woods and meadows of Beaver Valley exists some of the last unspoiled bucolic scenery in Delaware County. In an area bounded by Smithbridge Road and Route 202, and bisected by Beaver Valley Road, hikers and riders of bikes and horses skirt the edges of forests in which Native Americans lived, pass by historic barns and houses that were built when the founding fathers of this country were still alive, cross meadows teeming with wildlife, forge shallow creeks which leak from ancient springs in the hills of Delaware County and northern Delaware. This valley is truly magical, and surely not just a natural treasure, but a historical one as well. George Washington's Continental Army camped nearby, and legend has it that British troops commandeered supplies in the Beaver Valley. This ancient valley with its unspoiled meadows and rolling hills now stand in the way of a chainsaw, a bulldozer, and a concrete truck. The fate of this amazing place hangs on a few short meetings of local politicians whose valuation of the land can be seen in the explosive development of the township in the past 20 years. Once rural township, which has grown from 10,000 residents in the year 2000, to 17,500 today. A modest attempt to set aside open space in the township provided residents some unspoiled land to use in common, but a large percentage of open space in Concord is inaccessible or fenced in, or lies in a utility right of way, or constitutes a very narrow ring of green space around densely constructed developments. True open space, which many in Concord see now as something to protect and not pave over, is almost completely gone, except for the Woodlawn parcel at the southwestern edge of the township, a parcel which the Concord Township website features as a feather in their caps because of its trails and history. How can a township tout open space in the Woodlawn Trust's trails and then take no action to protect it? If the supervisors vote to permit any construction on this land, they are killing the very thing that people love most about Concord Township. Once upon a time in the land 
According to early Bancroft documents, the primary purpose of the trust was to hold much of the land for the public. The greenway he envisioned offered the public an escape from the confines of the city, and Bancroft was not alone in wanting to save open space. Fifty acres of the land scheduled for destruction in Concord Township was ironically sold to the Woodlawn Trust so that it could be protected. Merlin Brubaker was eager to protect his piece of Beaver Valley, so he contacted the Woodlawn Trust with the conservation of his property in mind. Exchanges between Brubaker and the Woodlawn Trustees indicate a willingness to have the land protected for future generations. In this letter, dated January 28, 1981, Woodlawn President Stephen Clark closes his letter with a fine tract of land added to those which Woodlawn tries to protect. And although Beaver Valley and other parts of the Woodlawn Trust, landowners who sold to the Trust were similarly convinced that their land would be protected. The Woodlawn Trustees would claim that the proceeds from their land sales are funneled into low-income housing in Wilmington. This, they claim, is part of their dual mission. That opaque organization doesn't reveal the names of its board members, doesn't hold public meetings, and doesn't reveal publicly how its funds are dispersed. There's no way to know what the public gets for its loss of publicly used land. They would also proclaim that they pursue orderly development. Based on the large sell-offs of their land over the last 60 years, this could only mean that they intend to pave over William Bancroft's legacy a little more slowly. Sometime in the 60s, the Woodlawn Trust began placing wildlife refuge signs around its land. These signs still dot the landscape and indicate a motivation by the trustees to protect the land for the wildlife that lives on it. Also in the 60s, Woodlawn incurred considerable expense to lay down a system of trails covering close to a thousand acres. What kind of a trust would sell off land that it went to the expense of building trails for? What kind of a trust would destroy habitat for wildlife after installing almost a thousand wildlife refuge signs? What kind of a wildlife refuge and publicly accessible recreation area covers its land with asphalt and concrete, cuts down its trees, and drives its wildlife away when for years it has signaled to the public that it wanted to protect the land? Interestingly, a document given to all leaseholders and renters of Woodlawn Trust property in Beaver Valley and elsewhere also demonstrates a willingness to preserve and protect the land for public enjoyment. Regardless of Woodlawn's claims, it has evolved into a public trust due to the unfettered access they've granted the public for half a century. The wildlife refuge signs they posted and the trails they built in the 60s, the stewardship rules given to renters, and the letters from Woodlawn to potential sellers all provide a glimpse of how Woodlawn once saw itself as a trust with protection of the land as a foremost consideration. What kind of an Orwellian caretaker designates a place as a wildlife refuge, builds trails for the public, tells its renters to be stewards and protectors of the land, and then destroys it? One day you'll look to see I've gone Almost with a guilty conscience, Woodlawn and the developers claim that their development will leave large areas of open space intact around the proposed development, but this conceals the fact that much of their open space can't be developed anyway. For example, approximately 20 acres of the land that Woodlawn claims it is leaving as open space lies within the confines of the Pence Wood Winery on Beaver Valley Road. No public trails will lie within its fenced-in vineyard, much of the remaining open space acreage falls on steep slopes or wetlands. The Concord Township Supervisors claim they want to protect open space, but at the recent May 14, 2013 meeting, no public comment was allowed. The builders' interests were paramount to the Supervisors as the meeting was quickly adjourned due to the builders temporarily withdrawing their applications. The public's interest in preserving the land, though, was not considered as no questions were allowed from the audience. Woodlawn claims time and again that they are in the land preservation business. Vernon Green, the Woodlawn representative at the May 14th hearing, reiterated this claim in his comments after the adjournment, yet Woodlawn will entertain no offers from conservancy groups offering to purchase their remaining land, not a position one would expect from a land preservation group. Some say that private landowners should be able to do what they want with their land, and we agree. William Bancroft, 
Merlin Brubaker, and Bill Derrickson intended to have their land protected. That's what they wanted to do with their land. The intent of these men seems not to matter as the Woodlawn trustees, the developers, and the supervisors of Concord Township prepare to ignore the overwhelming opposition to this development. A short trip down Route 1 into Chad's Ford belies the claim by Concord Township supervisors that their hands are tied and that they can do nothing to stop development. Bucks County's extensive efforts to preserve land also give the lie to their claims. Some claim that folks who want to stop the development stand in the way of progress, that development is the natural order of things. It must be, then, that those Americans who secured Yosemite, Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon, and Valley Forge National Park for future generations to enjoy stand guilty of the same offense. Singing Mustang Sally on the air.